In this lesson, we're going to cover quadratic equations, particularly the formulas that you need to know that's associated with this topic. So there's three forms for a quadratic equation. The first form is known as the standard form of a quadratic equation. It's y is equal to ax squared plus bx plus c. If you were to graph this formula, it may look something like this. You're going to have a parabola. If A is positive, the parabola is going to open in the upward direction. When that happens, the lowest point is known as the vertex. I'm going to put V for vertex. Let's put that over here. Now the line that passes through the vertex, this dashed line, this is the axis of symmetry. And it's equal to the x coordinate of the vertex. So if you want to find the coordinates of, of the vertex for an equation in standard form, the x coordinate is negative b over 2a. And then you can plug that in. You can plug x in to get the y coordinate. So the vertex is going to be negative b over 2a, and then the y coordinate will be f of negative b over 2a. So that's how you can find the coordinates of the vertex if you're given the equation in standard form. Now, because the graph opens upward, the vertex represents the minimum of the function. If the graph were to open downward, that is if A was negative, the vertex would represent the maximum. So if A is negative, it would look something like this. This is the vertex, and this would correspond to a maximum on the graph. So the axis of symmetry is simply the x-coordinate of the vertex. So it's negative b over 2a. Now the y-intercept is going to be 0 comma c. So whatever the c value is in this equation, that is going to give you the y-intercept. Now if you set y equal to 0, and if you need to solve for x, you could use the quadratic formula. Now here it is. x is equal to negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. Notice this part, negative b over 2a. That's the equation that gives you the axis of symmetry and the x-coordinate of the vertex. This part inside of the quadratic formula is the discriminant. The discriminant is equal to b squared minus 4ac. When the discriminant is positive or greater than 0, that means you have two real solutions. If the discriminant is equal to 0, you have one real solution. If it's negative, which means it's less than 0, you have two imaginary solutions. By the way, for those of you who want to print out of these formulas, feel free to check the links in the description section below. I'm going to post a link where you can, you know, download and print a formula sheet with these notes. So now let's move on to the vertex form of a quadratic equation. In order to go from standard form to vertex form, you need to complete the square. When you do, you need to turn it into this format. y is equal to a times x minus h squared plus k. The a in this equation is the same as the a in the other equation. Now, whenever you get it in vertex form, you can easily identify the coordinates of the vertex. It's simply h comma k. So you'll have to reverse this number. It says negative h, but it's going to be positive h here. This number you don't need to reverse sign. So it's just going to be k. The AOS, the axis of symmetry, will be the x-coordinate of the vertex. So it would simply be x is equal to h. 
So for instance, let's say if we have y is equal to 3, x minus 4 squared plus, let's say, plus 5. Even though you see a negative 4 here, you need to change the sign. h is going to be positive 4, k is positive 5. So the vertex is 4, 5. Since a is positive, that tells us that the parabola opens upward, which means the vertex represents a minimum value. So the minimum of this parabola is located at x equals 4, and the minimum value is 5. x is usually associated with the location of the minimum. y is associated with the value of that minimum. Now, the axis of symmetry for this example will be x is equal to 4. It's just whatever this number is. Now, in order to find the y-intercept, what you need to do is set x equal to 0 and solve for y. In order to determine the x-intercept, you need to set y equal to 0 and solve for x. Now, the last form is not a very common form, but it's called the intercept form of a quadratic equation. There's a good chance that you may not use this in class, but for those of you who will use it, here are the formulas. So the intercept form of a quadratic equation is y is equal to a times x minus p times x minus c. Now, there's a good chance you may see this, but it's not always common. Basically, this is the factored form of a quadratic equation. Now, it's easy to see what the x-intercepts are. The x-intercepts are basically... Okay, for this, I meant to put q instead of p. So let me just rewrite this better. I don't know why I put c. So it's a times x minus p times x minus q. The x-intercepts are p and q. So as an ordered pair, it's p comma 0 and q comma 0. So it's basically whatever you see here. So for instance, let's say if we have the formula y is equal to negative 4, x minus 3, x plus 2. The first x-intercept will be positive 3, 0. We need to change negative 3 to positive 3. And the second one will be negative 2, 0. We need to change positive 2 to negative 2. If you set negative p equal to negative 3, p will be equal to positive 3. If you set negative q equal to positive 2, q will equal negative 2 if you solve it. You would have to basically multiply both sides by negative 1. This becomes positive q, and on the right, negative 2. So it's very easy to find the x-intercepts if you have the intercept form of the quadratic equation. Now, in order to find the y-intercept, you need to set x equal to 0, and you need to solve for y. Notice what happens if we do that. Actually, let me keep that example. So starting with this, starting with this formula, let's replace x with 0. We're going to have a is equal to, I mean, a times 0 minus p times 0 minus q. So we have a times negative p times negative q which is simply APQ. So the y-intercept is going to be 0, comma, APQ. So if you multiply A, P, and Q together, you're going to get the y-intercept. So in this example, it's going to be 0, comma, negative 4 times 3 times negative 2. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12 times negative 2. That's going to be 24. So the y-intercept for this example is 0, 24. 
Now you might be wondering, how do we find the vertex and the axis of symmetry? In order to find the vertex, what you need to do is take the average of P and Q. That will give you the X coordinate of the vertex. To find the Y coordinate, you need to plug in that value into the original equation and get Y. So for this example, we know that P is positive three and Q is negative two. So if we average three plus negative two and divide it by two, three plus negative two is one. So we get one half. That's gonna be the X coordinate of the vertex. Now to get the Y coordinate, we need to plug in one half into this formula. So it's negative four. I'm just gonna put 0.5 minus three for a half and then 0.5 plus two. So notice that this is negative 2.5 and that's positive 2.5 and then times negative four. Negative 2.5 times negative four, that's gonna be positive 10. 10 times 2.5 is 25. So the Y coordinate is gonna be 25. So that's how you can find the vertex. The axis of symmetry is simply gonna be the X coordinate of the vertex, which is a half. So in intercept form, the axis of symmetry, the AOS, is going to be just P plus Q divided by 2, or 1 half P plus Q. So those are the formulas that are associated with the different forms of a quadratic equation. So by the way, if you want to get a printout of these notes, feel free to check out the formula sheet in the links below.